Hi, I'm Matt Casey, Data Science Content Lead at Snorkel AI, and I'm here today with Min, a machine learning engineer also at Snorkel AI. Min, would you like to introduce yourself further? For sure. Hi, my name is Min Hajdul Haq. I'm a machine learning engineer here at Snorkel. I've been working in AI for many, many years, really bringing the AI ideas of customers and companies into life, turning really complex ideas into real world practical solutions. Okay, so the case we're talking about today is a RAG system for a top 10 US bank. Is that right? Exactly. Uh, a very complex RAG system that we worked on hard, complex problems where out of the box solution was not working well. And we're able to bring the performance from out of the box, low performance to high quality production level performance. Okay. And what was the specific task that the system was built to, to fulfill? The goal was to answer questions from complex PDF documents, uh, complex legal PDF documents, 200 to 500 pages long. Answering questions from one of these PDF docs takes hours and hours. Automating this would save a lot of time and also uh, allow the SMEs to enjoy maybe the more fruitful parts of their jobs. So when you say it would take hours to answer a question from these documents, do you have a sense of what that process looked like? Typically, it would look like opening the large PDF, um, finding the question they need to be answered, control F to find different uh, parts of the definitions, uh, and doing that a few times until they gather enough information to answer the question. So very cumbersome, uh, brutal process that we did automate with the Q&A rack system. And what kind of questions are we talking about in general? You know, deciding on what are the next five payment dates on this particular legal document. This type of question requires to extract definitions and information from different parts of the PDF document. Some, some of it might be in page 30. Some of, some of it might be in page 50. Some information that you might need is like the current date. Really, you need to extract a lot of these definitions because, for example, for the payment dates, it cannot be on a, on, on not a business day. Got it. Mm, that's some important context. So what was the starting point for this project? I understand that this was, this was a big project. There were a couple of sprints. Where did it start? The initial baseline that they were working with was out of the box, uh, GPT-4 and out of the box embeddings, like text ADA embeddings from OpenAI. And they were, weren't really getting the performance that they were looking for. They were getting things like 25% answer accuracy. And this is expected, right? If you think about an out-of-the-box system, the, the embedding model might be good at differentiating media documents versus legal documents. But when it comes time to differentiate different paragraphs in, an, in the same legal document, it was having a hard time differentiating a relevant chunk versus a non-relevant chunk. And there were a lot of components to that system. So it wasn't just a large language model. What else did you have in this LLM system? One abstraction that we like to use is really dividing the rack system into three main components. If you think about it as pre-retrieval component, retrieval component, and post-retrieval component, pre-retrieval being everything that goes into preparing, developing the data before adding it to the vector database. Think about chunking, enhancing with metadata to chunks, uh, deciding on what chunks to include in the vector database. Maybe, for example, you don't want to include a table of contents because it's not relevant for your use case. But retrieval is all about the retrieval aspect, retrieving the different chunks uh, to be able to answer the question. Think about fine-tuning the embedding model so it learns the nuances in your data, so then it's able to retrieve the relevant chunks. And then for post-retrieval, it'd be whenever you retrieve the right chunks, how do you use that information to answer the question? In that particular step, you might do things like re-ranking, prompt optimization. You might inject other additional information into the prompt. For example, in our case, we had to inject the, like the current date. All right. So you referenced a first sprint, and I know that you said that the initial version of this started at 25% accuracy. The first sprint was how long? Yeah, the first sprint was three weeks. And including in those three weeks was the evaluation portion where we collaborated with the SMEs at the end to really ensure that the system that we fine tune was better than their baseline and it is valuable to what they're looking for. For example, it's not just about getting um, responses that are accurate, but also responses that are, are very comprehensive and gives good explanation that the SMEs can use to assess if the generations are good or not. So that first sprint was three weeks and you boosted the accuracy from 25% to what? 
we boosted the accu answer accuracy from 25% to 79 in the first sprint. That's a, that's a pretty big boost. What, what were the biggest movers? What, what really had the most impact there? It was really optimizing the different components that I talked about, pre-retrieval, retrieval, and post-retrieval. But we noticed that the biggest impact really came from the pre-retrieval optimization and the retrieval. For example, in the pre-retrieval, doing smarter chunking, uh, for example, keeping paragraph, bullet points, different structural components of the PDFs together was really important, but also enhancing the different chunks of metadata. For example, knowing that a paragraph is um, in section A, is it talking about a date? Is it talking about definitions? A lot of relevant metadata that we can use later on in the retrieval process. For example, constricting the search space with metadata filtering. So if you know question A is talking about dates, you can filter your vector database uh, by dates, and then you retrieve, so you have a higher likelihood of retrieving in the right context. And also for other uh, types of techniques as uh, guiding the synthetic data generation by using the metadata. So a lot of useful things you can do with metadata, but you're able to create these custom extractors with Snorkel Flow very quickly. Typically it would take you months to maybe just create one. We're able to create one or two in a matter of days, which allows, uh, allows you to really enhance your chunks with these relevant metadata. And for the retrieval aspect, it's really fine-tuning the embedding model. Um, by specializing the embedding model to the legal documents, it was able to now uh, retrieve the right context. You said something about custom extractors. Can you expand on that? Yes. So we built a few custom extractors during the sprint. For example, one of them was date extractors. Another one was definitions extractor. This allows us to locate what paragraphs are mentioning dates or mentioning definitions. And this is very useful, especially if you know your particular question is related to dates or definitions, or if you want to do more advanced types of techniques later on. Since Snorkel Flow really accelerates the data development process, we're able to create these extractors in one day, pretty much. So you're saying the helper model would have taken months. Never mind the system itself, this helper model that enhanced the system would have taken months to build and you were able to build it in a day. Exactly. That's pretty big. How long would this project have taken end to end without snorkel flow? Hard to say. Uh, it might have not been pursued or it might take many, many months. And also the SME annotations, if they wanted to annotate 500 CLOs, would take months itself. Using a data development platform like snorkel flow really accelerates many parts of it and it gives you the luxury to do many more experiments in sprint one we're able to run more than 40 experiments and by doing experiments you learn from error modes you find errors of improvements and that allows you to derive other experiments to run and slowly converging to a state that's production ready 40 experiments in sprint one that's a, a lot of experiments 40 experiments in three weeks running experiments is one of the most cumbersome and slow process really having a platform in a process that allows us to expedite and do this a bit more quicker, allowed us to tackle these errors in a very targeted manner. What was really interesting running the 40 experiments, this is a system. We're not talking about a model. This is a rack system. So whenever you do modify one thing, it might have a, an effect to the other components as well. But what, what was really interesting to see is how important it is to develop the data in the pre-retrieval aspect, but also for the retrieval aspect. When you're have a good pre-retrieval and retrieval components, then you have all the information required to answer the question accordingly. So did you use models to help determine which data to include in the vector database, or was that done in a more sort of rule-based system? So to, to, to decide on what to include in the vector database, we use a mixture of techniques, but one of the the useful techniques we were able to use was to rely on these labeling functions or more pattern-based functions to kind of really di uh, differentiate the noise from the good chunks to add to the vector database. For example, table of contents, um, appendix. Table of contents and appendix, that's pretty straightforward. But what kind of other things were you filtering out? For the retrieval component, we created a lot of synthetic data. But you can imagine with synthetic data, there's a lot of good synthetic data and a lot of bad synthetic data. So you need a way to filter it or also to guide it by knowing, you know, what sections each paragraph or chunks are included in, you can guide the synthetic data generation. For example, you can say only create synthetic data in section A, B, and C. And this project you said is ongoing? 
So th this project is indeed ongoing. We worked on sprint one that we just talked about, but we also finished sprint number two, where we were able to get the performance from 79% answer accuracy to 89% answer accuracy. Now we're working on phase number three or sprint number three, where we're looking to expand the number of questions to additional questions and also expanding the techniques that we're using, maybe fine tuning the generation model to really ensure that we have the highest quality performance. 89% is obviously great. And that means it's going to be getting the answer right nine out of 10 times. But what about the other one? What happens then? The RAG system gets a lot of the questions right all the time, and it has a harder time on select few questions. And for the other rest of the questions where it struggles a bit more, we're going to be continuously iterating and trying to get it better. Well, I think I've gone through my questions. And uh, the last question I always end with is, what haven't I asked about that I should have asked about? So as we mentioned, labeling, manually labeling these uh, complex PDF documents would take hours and hours just for the SMEs. So the question is, how can we scale their knowledge on how to annotate these PDFs so that we can annotate a larger amount, 500 of these PDFs, very, very quickly? Now, what we're able to do is really encode their domain expertise, recording what, what pages they, they go to, what definitions they look for for particular questions. And by knowing that, we can encode that into these functions or labeling functions that we call them, and that these labeling functions can then go on and label a larger amount of these PDFs. And by doing this process, we create a set of programmatic labels. And by using a combination of manual labels, which was three or four PDFs, programmatic labels, which was maybe 70% of the curated data set, and another maybe 15 to 20% of synthetic data, we have a curated data set that has a mixture of all three that we can then use to fine tune the embedding model. If there's nothing else, then I'll say, Min, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Matt. This was really fun. I look forward to talking to you again. All right.